Hi there, um, here's your question. It's a bit of a tricky one, you know, the, the question is towards the end of the paper and um, it is a bit fiddly. But uh, here's my explanation of it and hopefully it makes sense. So I've written at the top there, it's a ratio of three to eight. So the two areas will be pi r squared, the bottom of the cone, and pi r squared plus pi r x. So I've defined x as being the length av. So you called it av. It's usually easier just to call it one letter. It makes the algebra less fiddly. And you also define the radius as being ab over 2. So I just change that to r. Well, you'll see why later. It's just got a lot easier just to use one letter. So there we go. So that's the first thing. Okay, so next up it says the area of the base of the cone, uh, the ratio of the two is 3 to 8. So pi r squared and then pi r squared plus pi r x. So times 3 eighths, which is going to make them equal to each other. So what we're trying to do here is find r over x. Because what we want to find, of course, is the, um, the angle. Oh, what colour should I go for? I want something dark, 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 dark. So I'll go, go black. So try to find this angle. So from our knowledge, knowledge of trigonometry, r and x, because this is a right angle triangle, r and x will enable us to find this angle by using which trig identity? I'll tell you at the end. But I'll have it over x, and then one of the trig identities uh, trick relationships, either sine, cos, or tan, will give us uh, this angle here. We'll call it theta. Okay, so doing that, then uh, we need to find r over x. So that means we just need to rearrange what's above to make r over x the subject. I think initially that looks quite tricky, but if you do the usual things, which is get rid of the division, get rid of the brackets, that makes things a bit easier. So if I um, put in now <coughs> 8 pi r squared is equal to pi r squared plus 3 uh, pi r x. But it just times that by 3 at the same time just to save time. So pi r squared plus 3 pi r x. Um, you see here that 8 pi r squared equals 3 pi r squared. So I can move that over. So I get uh, 5 pi r squared is equal to 3 pi r x. Or you could say that the, um, 3 pi r x must be 5 pi r squared because that's how I get 8. 3 pi r squared plus 5 pi r squared. Whichever way you want to look at it, which is whichever is more intuitive. Okay, so we've got 5 pi r squared equals 3 pi r x. So we're getting closer. We just want r and x. So if I now pull it across even further, I'm running out of room here at the bottom, so I'm going to just go to the right a bit here and remove everything from the right-hand side. So I've got 5 pi r squared minus 3 pi r x equals 0. And then do what we often do in this situation, which is factorise it. So what's common is pi and r. So I'll just take that outside of the brackets. Oops, done that wrong. Start again. Pi r... It's going to be 5r minus 3x equals 0. So we've got two options here. Either pi r equals... <coughs> excuse me. Either pi r uh, equals 0 or 5r minus 3x equals 0. And the reason for that is because the brackets. Brackets means multiply. So these two things are multiplying each other and the answer is nothing. So that implies that one of them must be zero. Now pi r is not zero because pi is a number and r is a distance. Times them together, definitely not that. So it must be the other one. So 5r minus 3x equals zero. Hopefully you can see where this is going because we're going to make x r over x a subject. So if I move the x over, divide by x, divide by five, I'm really running out of room here, sorry then I'm going to get uh, r over x is equal to 3 over 5. So that's the same as k 
cosine of the angle. Or divided by x, isn't it? It's the bait is the width divided by hypotenuse. So we'd use cosine there, cos theta is equal to the width normalized using x. So all I've got to do now is inverse cos of three fifths. Inverse cos of three fifths. Now you probably look that one up on the calculator, but um, what that will be is uh, if we quickly draw it, you can actually see what it would be. So this would be effectively three, and this would be five. If that's the case, this would actually be four because it's a three, four, five triangle. So the angle to this um, will turn out to be. 53.1 degrees. It's actually quite a famous angle. So that should be the answer. Um, it looks quite reasonable. So if you want to have a go, make sure that you can work your way through that. Yeah, it is tricky, um, but it's a question towards the end of the exam. You know, it's for the real top students, something to push them, um, which is good. But obviously it takes a little bit of uh, knowledge and skill. Any questions on that, get in touch and um, make sure you're happy with it. Okay, speak soon.